All right. So our speaker is coming to us from India, and that's Dr. Rama Sharma. You can see him in the background. He gave an amazing talk last year on this topic, but unfortunately, it got uh, edited yes. completely out. <laughs> yeah. So I was really yeah. sad, but very happy that you're here. So forget <laughs> the past. We're looking forward to a better future. Yes. So uh, Dr. Sharma is associate professor. He's well known around the world, by the way, as one of the uh, first um, remote teachers, uh, which a lot of people think is just a COVID-19 invention, but actually we've been doing this for almost 30 years. He's Associate Professor of Instructional Design at DRBR, University of New in New Delhi. He's an OER, Open Education Resource Ambassador of the OER Foundation. Um, he's also membership chair, World Association of Online Education. And you can see a list of lots of amazing uh, things that um, Dr. Sharma has been doing these past, I guess it is over 20 years. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't see any dates here, but I've known you <laughs> for at least that time. <laughs> so I'm yeah. At least 20 years. And um, Dr. Sharma's avatar is called RCS Darwin. All right, so I'm going to let you start. Uh, we've got lots of time since we're no, no more uh, presentations for today. So go mm -hmm. ahead and thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you, Nelly. And at the outset, uh, let me thank uh, our dear friend, uh, Dr. Doris Molero. Before this session start, uh, I was trying to uh, say that if I can handle it, my presentation in second life. Uh, <laughs> but then since it is a long time now, uh, you know, I visited uh, the <laughs> islands. So they, then I thought that, okay, it is better that uh, let me be in Zoom. And uh, from here, I will present. So let me share the uh, slides first. What I am planning to do is first uh, I'll show actually this is uh, uh, our work which we have done with one of my friend and I uh, requested him the, the photograph which you see in the center of the slide now was just taken one hour ago with the help of Doris. So thanks for that. And uh, uh, Dr. Yashpal Sharma who is my colleague uh, we did some experiments, created some learning experiences in virtual reality applications. And he just reached home from his office. So he was saying that, uh, uh, <laughs> let me uh, you know, take care of some family business. I said, okay, no problem. Uh, I will uh, go about it. So uh, what I will do first, I will give some little background. And then I will show the uh, live pages uh, where we have created this VR uh, experiences. So that is um, uh, thinking. Now, first of all, uh, the pedagogy of uh, uh, student engagement, if we see it actually, it uh, uh, embodies these things like creativity, uh, student autonomy, engagement, and uh, metacognition. And we have been working on developing a framework for uh, transformed pedagogies uh, by designing and creating virtual reality experiences for learners. Uh, school sector as well as higher education sector, uh, both the cases. And these transformative learning experiences, they enable our students to learn creatively by exploring and experimenting uh, as active citizens by making certain choices. Uh, in addition to, they are able to take certain decisions uh, for problem solving and engaging intellectually by generating ideas, uh, reflecting on their own learning. And uh, as uh, Dr. Nelly uh, in her, uh, you know, um, these courses uh, gives much more stress on how we can reflect and in fact, if you remember that uh, 
uh, in our model courses uh, uh, we expect the participants to reflect on various sessions to to let us know that what uh, uh, they have means uh, learned from the session so reflection is very important reflection on our own learning and uh, by learning how to learn through metacognition so we created virtual immersive experiences for students using the real world content that is a uh, 360 degree media and uh, uh, there then synthetic content which is uh, computer generated or in some cases a mix of these two so so our work involved creating virtual reality content for the places of mostly the historical uh, places uh, uh, in delhi and uh, in other parts where uh, we could easily uh, go there so our work is a type of uh, high end virtual reality but low end extended reality uh, we we put it into that category and we are exploring the usability of this framework uh, in different discipline areas uh, uh, within the framework of the theory of the uh, cognitive fit and situated learning theory which allows a greater degree of student engagement uh, for life enriching uh, experiences and uh, when we talk of next generation of the media revolution as we say like the immersive technologies and as uh, dr nelly just said uh, in our last uh, uh, conference i presented on virtual worlds uh, so those so uh, the 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 kind of immersion in which we feel that we are there at such things happening around us uh, so the technologies like uh, augmented reality virtual reality mixed reality they are becoming the center of discussion in education technologies and uh, you must have various uh, sci-fi uh, movies uh, science fiction where all the uh, data capture and interpretation is just happening in front of glasses or goggles means it is just 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 uh, through that and with the advancement of science all these technologies are available now although mostly they are for commercial purposes and it is quite difficult to find something like uh, open source uh, fos uh, softwares uh, for that so means uh, even we had to use a uh, um, adobe captivate and something which are you know uh, proprietary items and uh, somewhat expensive but these technologies they can uh, change the field of education if we employ them uh, meticulously uh, you are aware about the horizon report uh initially it was published by I mean, still few years ago by new media consortium which is a non profit organization uh, in us and now taken back by educos <clears throat> so every year the horizon report it discusses uh, uh, certain uh, education technology things uh, uh, which are uh, you know uh, impacting the education sector uh, say one to two years which is right now then two to three years and beyond four five years what what can be uh, there so the, uh, the this report profiles key trends and technologies which have an impact on the future of teaching and learning so this report highlights that the extended reality uh, is uh, useful to augmented uh, uh, traditional pedagogy and uh, this is a mix of augmented reality virtual reality haptic technologies which offer either fully immersive uh, experiences or as a blend of physical and uh, virtual world uh, like on the internet nowadays uh, uh, some video is very popular in which there is a hall and the students are sitting there and in the center it looks like it is a pool and from the pool the dolphin comes out and jumps and water splashes all around like that or i think there is a very famous uh, Uh, video going on on the internet about i think singapore or japan in which on the front of the shop you know a line emerges and then roars so the people around on the road they feel like or the waves splash it looks like the waves are going down on the road so these kind of experiences which can be 
partially immersive or fully immersive uh, in there and this virtual reality it provides uh, the a greater uh, immersive content for the participants to engage with to interact with and to manipulate the uh, virtual objects let us see some of the uh, uh, means examples where the universities and individuals they have done some work like uh, this uh, immersive experiences lab by this uh, grenell college of uh, uh, established there and they are very popular these kind of applications are popular in gaming in health sector in defense for training purposes and other industries and educational institutions are also um, increasingly using them uh, particularly when new hardware and software they are uh, available so uh, this is a immersive experience lab which has been set up at uh, grenell college to explore the innovative ways to teach liberal arts using immersive 3d or virtual reality or mixed reality content and a commendable aspect of uh, uh their approach is to distribute these as dr nelly will be very happy to uh, hear it to distribute them as uh, open educational resources for the benefit of uh, larger education community uh, by them there then another example is this uh, uh, engineering education transformation institute at the university of uh, georgia uh, where through this uh, 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 EETI, which is Engineering Education Transformation Institute, uh, the augmented, remote, and virtual experimentation grants. You can see it there. Here, they uh, uh, allow the researchers to work on projects to improve teaching and learning in uh, engineering education, uh, like uh, augmented uh, uh, laboratories in introduction to electrical engineering course. using virtual reality technology for social and physical engagement in remote laboratories and development of uh, augmented or remote experiential uh, learning uh, modules on renewable energy uh, courses and among them uh, the work is being done there then this uh, uh, boys state university they have created games and interactive media and uh, uh, mobile technology program through their gimm uh, which is uh, games interactive media and mobile uh, where the students they design and uh, build mobile apps uh, uh, virtual learning environments by working on a collaborative project from there and similarly uh, there is another example of uh, uh, the center of innovation at leiden university so this uh, leiden university and uh, yeah okay yes this one uh, with the medical center there they created a quite interesting thing they call it as a b c d e approach so here it is airway means breathing circulation disability and exposure uh, approach using the virtual reality thing means to teach the uh, faculty on uh, uh, that uses 360 degree video for teaching how to provide emergency services and the name of these emergency services is a b c d e uh, uh, the airway breathing circulation disability and uh, uh, exposure there and uh, there is another project by them uh, they call it as uh, aug medicine means augmented uh, medicine as a so transplant case which is an augmented reality application in which the hmd the head mounted devices as you saw in one my photograph uh, in the previous uh, slide there uh, display and particularly like microsoft hololens where medical students and teachers they can view uh, and interact with 3d holograms so the developments and research in these areas have indicated that these technologies are very significant in skill based courses and which support competency pedagogy so in all those uh, uh, applications the learner engagement is prime means 
it 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 enhances enhances it to a uh, great extent now in india we have one uh, national council of educational research and training which is the apex body and particularly they uh, create the curriculum for uh, school education so they have created an e patshala patshala is a hindi word for you can say school so uh, it is e patshala means e school augmented reality app uh, which allows the students the teachers and educators to interact with the content of the textbooks created by that national council of educational research and training because it is their uh, domain uh, means uh, they are uh, they have the right kind of expertise and specialty in creating textbooks for uh, school sector in india and particularly this augmented reality app it offers interactive 3d simulations to the users and uh, anybody can download it it is available on google uh, play store also and you can see that uh, you can find the uh, select it on the basis of the class subject chapter and topic and then uh, there uh, so it 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 acts as a self learning uh, uh, tool and the pedagogy behind this initiative allows the students to visualize and comprehend the uh, concepts through interactive 3d simulations which are laid over uh, illustrations maps or diagrams as provided in the uh, those school textbooks uh, say for example what happened that uh, if i want to show desert so either i take a two dimensional uh, this static photograph and put it there but with the help of this as a as a putting another layer of augmented reality i can take a 360 degree uh, 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 media of uh, say thar mm-hmm. desert or sahara desert or any desert the advantage is that now you can rotate it in 360 degree and can see it that in reality how it happens and what is available where so these are done means the interesting point here is that it uses marker based augmented reality so we put our image recognition ar where an image it acts as a marker to trigger something to the to the to the next object and the cam- uh, what happens that uh, we have the camera and this camera scans the uh, marker which is different from surrounding uh, environment and then it triggers the application to place the content uh, uh, into that so the and the content is already uh, included in these textbooks in the form of either image or audio or video or animation whatever the different kind including h5p Uh, content which is interactive content h5p uh, uh, is very popular nowadays open source technology and uh, we can uh, create a very full and wonderful uh, uh, content uh, uh, using that there so this is uh, and it is very easy to handle it through mobile apps so what the students have to do first they have to download that app on their uh, device uh, 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 to experience the ar and here in this app uh, the e patshala uh, uh, augmented app uh, so the uh, student they scan the image marker in the textbook and the projects as a 3d simulation and after that they can interact with on their mobile screen by orienting the camera in different corners or say for example if i want to show the cell structure and in cell structure like we have the cell wall and the mitochondria is there or there are other organelles so you can just zoom in zoom out focus on a particular and uh, from which angle what site we want to see it from there so that can go uh, uh, from there our other uh, work is uh, to create virtual reality experiences for heritage places and uh, means the here the virtual uh, when we conduct it 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 gives the uh, feeling of the imaginary or near reality when we say virtual reality and it is basically an experience taking place within a simulation which can be similar to or completely different from the real world and the immersive artificial environment here it is created by using software <clears throat> and presented to the user in such a way that the user ex- accepts it as a real environment so currently the uh, 
uh, head mounted devices uh, they are required to feel the immersive user experience as you see it in my hand uh, there or even google uh, cardboard which is uh, a low cost uh, there in which uh, we can uh, you know have the cardboard there with the two lenses and put our mobile into it and then we can see it into the uh, 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 immersive uh, reality from there so this hmd they can be standalone like uh, uh, oculus rift uh, htc vive etc or commercially available hmd which can be sport which can support these uh, mobile devices the kind of virtual reality tours i will uh, show you the uh, websites means the experiment which we have created uh, there uh, of the important monuments and other places of interest as per the educational uh, based content we have developed them and mapped the concept which is taught through them so depending on the immersive experience means what kind we have we can have it as the in three uh, varieties non immersive semi immersive and fully immersive so uh, since uh, uh, we have the limitation in fact uh, my friend he had spent his uh, own personal money in acquiring these gadgets so mostly our work is either non immersive or semi immersive because for fully immersive we need uh, the uh, high tech uh, you know gadgets like that and uh, we have covered places like mahatma gandhi ashram uh, in uh, wardha in maharashtra central india then gandhi smarak uh, in india uh, uh, sorry in new delhi and then qutub minar you see it in the uh, image here which is considered to be the tallest minaret the brick made minaret perhaps in the world initially it was when it was built some 5 600 years ago it was seven storied but it is believed that uh, due to light lightning strike two of the uh, top uh, stories means they got damaged so now it is and a few years ago i think maybe some 10 15 years ago uh, when there was a tour of the school students going because initially the it is now under uh, uh, archaeological survey of india control so the tourists the visitors they were allowed to go on the top but what happened that due to stampede when there was a tour of the school students were there there was a really very tragic accident and after that uh, it was stopped there but uh, the government has put a camera on the top there and from the screens uh, on the ground floor the people can see a very good bird's eye view of the means the surrounding areas in which this uh, minaret uh, is uh, uh, available so we can uh, have and then we have covered taj mahal which is one of these considered uh, as uh, one of the seven wonders of the world so beautiful as a monument of <laughs> love and uh, uh, like that so there and then this the, we we captured all these uh, using our 360d uh, camera like uh, theta s or lg 360 cam and insta uh, 360 r and this what we did after that after capturing the content um, we synthesized it using various uh, software tools like h5p which is open source uh, adobe premiere pro adobe creative uh, cloud and used a very interesting uh, portal which is called as stories fear and uh, uh, lepentor i'll show you the website of those so apart from these large number of content is updated on uh, street view i think i will show you one when i was teaching in wawasan open university in malaysia i created a 360 degree and that is uh, simple using the google street view app uh, by downloading it and then we can take a 360 degree image and it works uh, uh, beautifully there it creates but uh, that is no immersive uh, example of that there and uh, uh, the mobile based cheap hmd or the vr boxes including the cardboard uh, they were used to feel the immersive so we created these works as semi immersive virtual reality which can be seen with um, uh, uh, the head mounted devices like 360 degree with these tours they can be seen through using your simple desktop 
or uh, uh, using the edge mounted uh, mounted devices to have this semi immersive impact from there so that can be uh, you know covered from there so let me now show you the to uh, share my screen again there is my browser perhaps okay here Okay, this is that platform. It is called as a, a, a story sphere. Here you can see that it is a tool for enhancing 360 degree images that lets us create, you know, add audio within a scene or to create interactive uh, uh, things in there. So this is one platform which we used, and then this is another uh, Lepentor, which is a free means uh, uh, virtual tool software. And uh, we have our own, you know, self-hosting domain uh, using that. So we create your ID, or you can have the paid version also of it, which offers uh, certain extra uh, facilities to us. So uh, what we created, let me show it to you. Like this is a virtual reality tour of Taj Mahal, and uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, Taj Mahal. And here, if we click on this, oh, sorry, I think for that, I need to enable the voice uh, in uh, Zoom. But if we click, I, I, I'll, I'll, okay, what I will do, let me, where is more and where is chat? Here is the chat. At least those who are on Zoom, they can see it won't go into YouTube. But uh, this is, if you click on the audio button, you can hear the commentary or the uh, music as well there. So these are the markers. If you click on it, it will take you to the next. And they are, this is the information. So this particular uh, door, it is called as darwaja e Raza. Darwaja means door, say, but also known as the great gate, which is the gateway to the Charbag gardens. Charbag means there are four gardens on four corners. Like so the information is included into it and then you can you know uh, rotate it in any direction there so it is completely 360 uh, degree and with the help of these markers you can keep on going there so you uh, can proceed from there and we created a youtube uh, uh, guide also on it this is available on YouTube. Uh, that is there. So this is about Taj Mahal. You know, as you can see here, it was uh, built in Agra, which is in Uttar Pradesh, uh, between 1631 to 16. So now it is around, uh, say, uh, 400 years old by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in the memory of his beloved wife, Mum Taj Mahal. It is considered as uh, that is one. Then this is Mahatma Gandhi Ashram in uh, Varda. This is also quite interactive. And uh, we click on this. These are the markers. And here, okay, let me close this one. Okay. So you can see you with the help of the mouse, we can uh, you know uh, rotate it. And we want to see the information about anything. We click on it. Here it will show the uh, image taken at that particular place, here it comes. And, and then here it is the last part, info about it. And this is the inside view and like that. So you keep on going and then you enter a particular portion. So this is like, this is the actual where he stayed, Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, here is the front wall. And you can see then the information, the gate here. These are the, is the sayings of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, all completely 3D into it. And this is the information. These are the belongings which have been saved. It is a museum uh, there in the state. So this is like uh, that. Then another is uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the great Buddha statue, and uh, you, you know these these are the markers. 
and it, this was uh, it, it is based on h5p so here if we click on it the sound can be enabled so the commentary uh, can be listened and when you click on it it will give you the information so this is the about the photograph and from here by clicking on it we can keep on going insight and uh, by traveling into there we can see and you can just rotate and if we are now the uh, switch on the microphone the commentary is inbuilt into it explaining everything as we see and from the markers we can go to uh, you know in the in the areas completely so like it like looks like you are walking around and seeing all these things on there similarly this is uh, another poem and here uh, you can keep on you know selecting this is uh, using that view in which uh, if you click on it the the cardboard then it shows you and if you put it then it gives you the 360 degree uh, impression of that so there you, you, we can check it from there and what is okay this is that uh, i think uh, i okay here that Tom, it is another was another ru uh, uh, ruler of India. So you keep on clicking; it takes you further and near. So and along this side, we can see what is around it. This is also situated in Delhi. So now you can keep on going near, and these are the uh, navigators for sound for moving up, moving down zooming in zoom out or uh, the web uh, virtual reality and the you can see it on google map and there the uh, toggle gyroscope uh, means you know your your device is there and as a little planet it, little planet means how it is seen uh, from the space uh, something like it can go and then you can just reach from there so you you keep on checking everything wherever you go and it will show you the uh, images the information you can cl by clicking it here we can go inside this is inside the tomb and like the roof click on it and it will show you the detailed uh, you know the beautiful structure which was created uh, oh sorry here it goes and click and then you can okay here like that so by clicking here we have covered almost all the sides of it by oh these are the here lay down the emperor and then we can go out so these are uh you know of uh we create we, uh, mostly we created it for places of his historical uh, interest in the beginning but uh, now we are focusing on i mean uh, other areas like scientific experiments and uh, say for example cell structure or human anatomy human body inside uh, uh, how it works to show them various original or some kind of uh, experiments related to chemistry or physics or in geography like that, those things they are trying to cover. So these are uh, some of our experiments uh, which uh, we have covered. Okay, so thank you so much. I think this was all. Uh, okay, let me show you one more thing which I have uh, created. It is, it is a static example of uh, uh, when I was in Vavasan, there I created. Okay, there is that. Let me just find the URL. Okay. I think this it should be.
Uh, yes. So, uh, friends, this is Wawasan Open University. I was teaching here in uh, this is, and at the back you see these trees. Uh, they it is uh, own our own beach. We uh, uh, that is Andaman Sea, and uh, this adjacent wall here. This is the place of uh, the king of another state in Malaysia, and in this building I was residing. So my residence just opposite the road, and uh, you see my shoe. That is a secret. So you can see this, and I I created it using my mobile phone. Simple. The, the you need only two things to create these kind of uh, things. You see how beautifully it has uh, stitched the images. And its zoom is also quite very powerful. So this university is uh, was created by this person, Mr. Ryuk Chair E. He came from China, I think, around 150 years ago. And then by his hard work, he became quite well. And uh, in his last days, he desired that it was his residence, this white building, desired that this property be used either for health purpose or for education purpose. So the family decided that, okay, uh, let us have a university and you can see the logo of Wawasan Open University there. So this is you know, completely and zoom in, zoom out. So what do you need? You, you have your mobile phone, just uh, you need to check two things. Means check the, uh, the, the gyro sensor in the phone uh, that should work. You need to calibrate it because when you click the photographs, the uh, application and you need the Google Street View app. Just install it. After that, just stand somewhere. Uh, don't move. You 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 just move road means yourself, not from point A to point B. By standing, you just uh, uh, you know, rotate in all the directions uh, throughout 360. And after that, just this app, it will stitch all those uh, small, small snaps which has been taken by the phone camera and it will create this uh, 360 degree. This is non-immersive actually in a way, not uh, means uh, there. So non-interactive, but that can be done. And uh, there are means I created uh, uh, quite a, uh, other applications and uh, here these are all. So this is my university, okay. Uh, in my, my current university where I am teaching. This is my room. My, the, uh, my room number is F1 and I usually joke Formula 1 racing car. Uh, this is quite great. But what happens that if the people move and when you are taking it, the camera may miss something. So like these people, they were stationary. They have come in full, but this gentleman, when I took the photograph, because you have to take it in, uh, you know, uh, snap by snap. And <laughs> so when I took it, it was there. And next time when I uh, uh, changed my uh, angle, moved from that place. So the camera missed it. That's why in the previous one, since there was no moving object, the image is quite good. So that has to be, uh, you know, checked with that. This is very much interesting. It is in South India. And uh, uh, this place is Sri Aurobindo uh, Ashram. Uh, it is very popular in the world. And the interesting thing is that I think uh, here they have brought the soil of around 150 countries as a showing that we are one as a unity. And uh, you know they you can visit it there. So Aurobindo uh, will there and see created again this person when he was sitting next time moved there so half captured from there but like that so this is Auroville in Pondicherry which is in South India from that place so if somebody of you is uh, planning to visit India I, I, I have shown you some of the places which you would like to you know, uh, visit so let me stop sharing and uh, Thank you so much. If there are all right, thank you, thank you so much. Um, there are questions, so um, let me see in the chat. Uh, 
everyone can unmute themselves and ask questions. If you like, you can also uh, share your video. Let me get that as well. So you can start your videos, open your videos up and say hello. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm looking for, um, you know, this uh, ability to do it on an iPhone. And I'm wondering if, you know, if it, it should work. I just don't know what app to use for the iPhone. Anyone familiar with an app for the iPhone for the 360 degree? Anyone? I'll look for it and let I, you know. I, if I, I, yeah, I don't have an iPhone. I, I know, know, I'm going to look know. for it. I'm sure it's yeah. there. I just have to find it. There are lots of apps. I will, I, I will check and then uh, maybe I will uh, send a message to you. Uh, because that's incredible. That is an incredible. Yeah. There was a question about challenges. Um, okay. What challenges do you predict for this? Uh, it means challenges of uh, creating the content or challenging of the technology as such? Well, I guess both. Uh, okay, and the first challenge which I find is the cost of the equipment. We want to have an Oculus purchased, but in India, due to the taxes, it is very expensive. So now I'm waiting for some of my friend who is coming from United States, uh, if they, they can bring. So the cost of the uh, uh, equipment is one thing, means the infrastructure, the hardware as well as the software. We, we had to use the like Adobe, Adobe softwares, you know, that uh, they are proprietary softwares. And we are trying to find out uh, some good, either means free or open source. Uh, so far, uh, means no. But that's why we use this story spheres, which allows us to integrate. And then we used H5P. So that is the first. The second is that uh, to have a little bit uh, training, but I believe that uh, uh, after doing some hits and trial, uh, some failure experiments, we learn and then things can improve from there. The another challenge is to think I mean the imagination. Sometimes people need to think that, uh, where can I, okay, the technology is very good, I agree, but how I will be able to use it? In that, that case, so, so some, someone says that, okay, I, I deal with language teaching. You know, I, I can say that for history, for geography, it is very easy. I take the, you to the historical place, record it. So that one, how it can be uh, integrated with a particular pedagogy of a subject discipline into it. In that case, we can, you know, so th these are the things I think uh, we can, we need to you know, uh, address from there. Um, if anyone has questions, just unmute yourself. Um, I see Ramesh there. Since you had the question, yes. <laughs> is there anything else that um, you'd like answered? Um, it's, uh, I think I, I am uh, in particular interested in, in uh, the production of, of this content because when the teacher uh, is teaching something, the subject matter expert, uh, typically they, don't, they only have available to them a few hours uh, to create the content. And, uh, and uh, when we start delving into the VR realm, we have to look at how much time it takes to, uh, you know, to create uh, the, the, the VR content. So um, if I can give an example here, uh, where uh, the first Ramesh, let, let's call myself Ramesh too, okay? <laughs> and, and, he, and he's Ramesh one. I'm going to, oh, okay, well, I can't share my screen, but- uh, Oh, you can't, well, I can let oh. you. That That's not a problem. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let great. me allow that, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Okay, just to give you an example. Uh, let me know if you can see. You know, the, I love the what? idea of having lessons, you know, with photos. I'm sure Doris um, also found that exciting. Oh, okay. Did I crash out? <laughs> oh, no, no, it's coming up there. Yeah, there it is. Now it is there. Uh, okay. Well, is it um, Baba Sahib Ambedkar Open University? Um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I don't know why my screen is flashing so much when I'm sharing this. But basically what I did was within Firestorm itself, you know, I have mm. this little app. I am, I am inside this 360 space. And uh, let me see, I just wanted to interact with 
Firestorm as well, uh, so that, uh, you know, let me see if I can do this, really. Oh, okay, I can. So I can, I should be able to walk around and, and show you. So you have a 360 view right now of any place on earth, basically within, within uh, Kitely. Um, so um, basically what I've done is I've just clicked the, on, a, on a button here and I've entered the address and uh, it just finds the panorama from Google. So this is a kind of an example of how, uh, you know, to, uh, to add to what Ramesh Wan is saying, uh, my interest is in, in terms of, of really speeding the production process. Um, so that, that, that's one of the challenges that I found. Um, the, the other one is uh, the production of VR immersive environments. And uh, I'm seeing uh, still a lot of interest, you know, from Facebook and from many different companies, Nvidia and all these companies who are still very much interested in, uh, in the immersive aspect of it. But it seems that we are still in the process of being uh, enamored by the technology. The basic concept is still there. We know about immersive 3D for, for a long time. But whenever I write grants, for example, one of the, the, the questions that reviewers come uh, back with, and even the NIH, uh, there was once I submitted a grant and one, uh, I had like a, a something that came from, not from the reviewers, but that from the agency itself that prevented me from using headsets because it is still not uh, a device that's cleared by the FDA, for example. And uh, so I had to change my, my research proposal. So I wonder if it's easier to do this kind of research outside the US because uh, the agencies are more flexible and they won't say, hey, you know, this device is shown to create uh, you know, uh, ocular tensions and it creates headaches. People cannot use them for more than 15 minutes uh, without experiencing uh, fatigue. And uh, those issues come up. So um, have you, uh, in your experience, come uh, across such a resistance? And it's not, it's kind of a fair resistance because, uh, you know, we haven't yet, uh, solved it here on our, on our end. So I wonder, you know, what, what's your view on this? Well, headaches are a problem for my, I know my students have complained a lot, but you know what? They complained years ago about the internet to the screen, like 20, no, 30 actually, 30 years ago, they used to complain about the screen, the computer screen. And they used to, a lot of students, especially girls, used to complain that uh, they got busy and everything and they couldn't take it and they would just go crazy. I think it might be the same thing with um, VR as well. It's just something that we need to get used to. And, and I think that we will. What do you think, uh, Dr. Ramesh? I think Which one? it is something. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the first one, <laughs> my old friend, <laughs> the older friend. Okay. Uh, I think it is something like, you know, when for the first time I got my specs for, so for a few days, you know, when I walk it, it looks like the earth is, you know, and I is like, you have to, and then put it again. So getting adjusted to that. And that helps with this HMD for a, uh, I agree with uh, Ramesh too, that more than, you know, some time it can have. But uh, that's why I think the kind of haptic technologies or XR technologies uh, in which uh, specifically we don't have to, you know, uh, attach something to our human body with immediately, that if something is at a distance, that will be less taxing on our senses. So uh, those developments, but yet, it is a, a you know uh, still you know, developing area coming up so uh, that way and regarding uh, i agree uh, ramesh with you that uh, those challenges are there in which uh, when and particularly if the students are involved uh, in india however you know still there is some certain sometimes excitement with the people so the students they feel very happy if you give them something so they don't complain about it 
but the reason is that uh, it is yet to be adopted on a uh, you know usual scale when i say usual scale now like now it is mobile devices have become usual devices to be used uh, in there uh, but these are still the in a way a kind of a luxurious uh, equipment to be used in that so there is an excitement to what to use it when the student they start regularly then we will come to know that uh, uh, what is the reaction and what are the policies framed by the government if there is any ethical issue health related issue or something whatever but at present it is absent because it is not organized in a particular uh, a specialized way uh, currently Oh, I can't hear. Uh, he said we will adapt. We're, yes. we're flex. We're adapting to a lot of changes, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think that we will also adapt to these things. Uh, Nelly, do yes. we have some time? I want to show an interesting thing. Yes, of course. In, in the, in uh, the there is also community. a comment. Nelly, yes, go Nelly, ahead. There is also a comment on the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, um, Stephanie. She she doesn't have a mic. Mm, oh, yeah. uh, she's Everybody answering to have... Ramesh question. She for me, needs to unmute version, herself. I mean, she doesn't have a... Oh, oh she doesn't okay. have a mic. I, think I can't help with that. I she doesn't have okay. a mic at the moment. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she shares and that. And uh, she, she <laughs> says... State of mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, that is, is a state of mind. Oh. And she also yeah. points Good. out that in Germany... Uh, uh, she can use VR due to privacy concerns. So that's another yeah. thing that um, I, particularly I find it, um, you know, still <laughs> far away, you know, uh, just having a computer, being able to, to, to have a headset and all this for children or for students to, to get into online learning, uh, having a, these headsets is something like it's going to be very hard. They're complaining about Zoom, that too many hours on, on, on Zoom is too much. Imagine having these sets, uh, you know, for long hours, you know. Yeah. No, I think that maybe Zoom. Um, that's why I, I like. <laughs> yeah, but I think See? that Zoom. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I think that Zoom is difficult. I can't stay on Zoom myself. I mean, I've used other platforms, um, you know, for years I've been using, you know, there was, there were other platforms like BB, which was um, called something else. And even with IQ and, and it wasn't as bad as this. I used to spend hours in virtual rooms, but Zoom for some reason drives me crazy after about 90 minutes. So I think there is something in Zoom that there isn't in other platforms. Sorry about that. Even BBB is better for students. Yeah, I uh, think the, what, what, what they said was for Zoom is people feel being watched all the time. <laughs> and, uh, and so they cannot like, uh, uh, yeah, but, but, but you know, you can also make the case for adaptation there as well, uh, you know. But what Stephanie says that you can use <clears throat> VR without these uh, headsets, yeah. and it's the same as Second Life or the virtual worlds. You know, you maybe you are not a it is a desktop. So, so, Yes. I hear you're walking oh, yeah. and you are sitting next to someone and you're dancing or you are visiting a place, you're knocking on a door, open a window, you have a seat where you can, you know, and that's that's the trick, you know. Yeah, but I'm waiting for Second Life and Virtual Worlds to be on the phone because I think that, um, you know, I don't get headaches or well, I don't get headaches anyways, but I mean, I feel a lot comfortable on a phone more than a tablet or iPad than on the desktop. The desktop is draining and Zoom on a phone is a lot easier, by the way, than on a desktop. You're more, you know, you're able to move around and take care of your, of your body where, you know, here you're, you're forced to sit, you know, mm -hmm. in front of a screen and you're not mobile. 
So unless uh, you're dancing, you know, I dance. Yeah, yeah, unless I, you're dancing on dancing. the chair. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, yeah, what <laughs> but I am dancing but too. <laughs> but it's not the same. You know, you're confined to, to get a creative chair. about it. Even <laughs> if you stand up, you're still confined to, you know, this uh, you know, it's not even 3D, it's just uh, you know, it's um it's hard. And and that's I that's the problem. That whatever it, we're gonna use it and we're going to adapt. <laughs> Except to the desktop, coming. that people will not adapt to. I don't believe in it. All and right. Now, yes, go okay. ahead. Very good. Yes, uh, last question from me. Sorry. Uh, um, recently, uh, Zuckerberg, uh, you know, made a big announcement about uh, mm -hmm. the metaverse and the HMDs and uh, and how it's going to revolutionize, you know, uh, work. Basically, people, a lot of people, try to. To, to do some, you know, try to work on this COVID phenomena. And uh, when he made his announcement, he showed uh, uh, people immersed in, a, well, in, a, in a basically tracking faces and, and having individuals mapped to a, to a cartoon version of themselves. And many, many people have tried it before him, uh, high fidelity, et cetera. Um, but why do you think there was such a lukewarm response from people all around, I mean, from the mainstream media and from Twitter. I mean, he got absolutely hammered as soon as Facebook started talking about a metaverse. In fact, everyone now is talking about metaverse and nobody seems to de be defining what it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's kind of a big mush. And uh, what are your thoughts about that? Maybe there if there's was money extra. in it, if there's money in it, <laughs> Facebook yeah. will yeah. get more uh, serious. It's there, all there, about there money. Is in, in Second Life, there are a lot of uh, people that are disabled, but they they have their avatars doing many things. Um, if you go to Virtual Ability Island and if you meet, you have met a Gentle Heritage, there are a lot of people that are, uh, they cannot use anything. They just use their eyes and, and they can move their avatars around. And and, and that's um, something that I don't know if you can do with VR, probably, you know, one day. If we can be done, if you can move your avatar uh, without the headset, probably that uh, that's something amazing for me. It is amazing. I just... Uh, so uh, recently, uh, there was uh, an artist that passed away, and, and I went to the exhi art exhibit uh, to look at the uh, paintings. And then we watched this video by by drag store uh, about him and, and and all the equipment that he has. On, and he was just on his bed and using his eyes, and he could wow. still produce and, and connect and live. And, and that's thanks to, to virtual worlds, you know? So I think it's, it is wonderful, you know, be able to, even if you don't have any the physical conditions, you still can communicate your ideas, communicate the world, you know, what you think. That's great. That's great. We're going to have to end because I have another meeting in a couple of minutes. Sorry about yes. that. <laughs> yes. Thank this you. is really interesting. Well, we had the yes. whole month, you know, we had oh, this yeah. right. really, really cool, uh, really and, cool um, and learning from the, from the people that are the experts in virtual world. So yeah, hmm. there's much more to, to talk about. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. both Thank Ramesh you, <laughs> and Thank Stephanie, you. you are here. Dr. Ramesh, really, uh, yes. From New Delhi, I'm and Becky. Dr. Ramesh from? From uh, Pennsylvania, right now. Pennsylvania, <laughs> that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so we've and got. I, well, they show my, my name too. So we have yeah, I know. Ramesh. Ramesh, uh, yeah, Ramesh is also presenting, you know. I know, so I know. Show I, know that. His, uh, I, I, I know work. that. Um, okay, okay, so great. So at least right. we know the, you know, the locations are different. So we can always say Ramesh from New Delhi and Ramesh from. Uh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> and <laughs> that'll get you guys straight. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us. We'll Bye. see you um, tomorrow. We've got a few sessions yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So okay. see you yeah. then. Bye okay. for now. Namaste, everyone.